All right, let's dive into the economic policy known as a value added tax or a VAT or a VAT tax, although VAT tax doesn't really make sense because it makes it a value added tax tax. But sometimes people say VAT tax. This has been coming up a lot more lately, particularly because Democratic presidential candidate Andrew Yang has been talking about VAT taxes. More people have gotten interested in the policy. And essentially, a VAT is a tax on consumption, it's on stuff that you buy. And it's implemented at different phases in the production of the good where value is added. There's a lot of different countries that have VAT taxes of different kinds. If you look at the countries that have VAT taxes, there's not really a trend about where we say, well, countries with VAT taxes tend to be higher income countries or lower income countries or countries with VAT taxes tend to have higher deficits or lower deficits. It's really all over the map. Uh, fi figuratively and literally. And people who like VAT taxes often say one of the pros is you generate income for the government to then use for stuff without just going after the wealthy with like a higher top marginal tax rate, for example. But that also relates to the primary critique of a VAT tax, which is that it's regressive, meaning it is more a tax on the income of poor people than rich people as a percentage of their total income. So imagine that you put a 5% VAT on computers. Rich people might consume more computers than poor people, but as a percentage of their income, poor people will pay more to a VAT tax than rich people if you put a 5% VAT tax on computers. Now, another pro of the VAT tax is that it is claimed to be harder to avoid a VAT tax with some of the tax loopholes that let you avoid other types of taxes. And the reason for that is that the VAT tax is added at each stage where value is added to a product instead of, quote, at the register like a sales tax. And so it doesn't disincentivize income like a high top marginal income tax rate might. We're going to deal with that later as well. Now, Andrew Yang's proposal includes the idea of uh, exempting some staples and putting sort of like a luxury VAT tax on luxury items that only rich people are likely to consume or purchase. And that that in principle would deal with the regressive nature of the VAT tax. So Yang says staples would have low or no VAT tax and basic goods would have low or no VAT tax, but then luxury goods would have a higher VAT tax. That's a perfectly reasonable idea, but there's very good research uh, from the Tax Policy Center about this, which says you can reduce the degree to which a VAT tax is regressive by exempting some staples and doing higher VAT taxes on luxury goods, but that the high income households consume um, uh, more of those uh, uh, luxury goods, but it's still less as a share of income and it still ends up being a regressive tax in total, just less so. Now, there are some inaccuracies in some of the things that Andrew Yang has said about the VAT tax. He will often flatly say the VAT tax already works in 100 countries. Eh, you know, the, it, it, VAT taxes exist in many countries, different parameters in different countries. There's different ways of measuring what success would be. The blanket statement that VAT taxes succeed or are working well in 100 countries, it's not a very meaningful statement to make. Now, there's an alternative to a VAT tax, which is a refundable tax credit for a fixed number of dollars that could be proposed. And with that, everybody gets the same amount. If you earn less, it's progressive in the sense that you get a higher portion of your income refunded if you earn less. And it's the exact opposite of a VAT in terms of this is a progressive tool, whereas the VAT tax is a regressive tool. So in total, what do we know about VAT taxes overall? Number one, they are regressive. OK, VAT taxes hit lower income people more than higher income people, even with a higher tax, a VAT tax on luxury goods, even exempting some staples. That's what the Tax Policy Center's research tells us. Number two, VAT taxes do tend to decrease consumer spending overall. And number three, VAT taxes do tend to increase the cost of goods at their final retail or consumer price, even though VAT taxes are levied at different stages in the production process where value is added. 
a lot or all of that is ultimately tacked on at the end to the retail price of a product. So does that mean a VAT tax is bad? No, I mean, it's just like any policy that taxes do raise money for governments. And then that is money the government can use to pay for things. There are many policies that have similar consequences where they either increase prices or they are regressive. That doesn't mean it's a policy that should never be considered or that it's a policy that should definitely be considered with any policy. We have to weigh the pros and cons. We have to consider whether there are better tools available that might more directly get us to our goal. We have to consider what is considered fair when we think about who should be taxed and at what levels. And then we have to also think about what behaviors are we trying to incentivize or disincentivize? What economic activity would a VAT tax encourage or uh, uh, disencourage, unencourage, disincentivize? And then we figure out whether a VAT tax makes sense. There's no universal right or wrong with these things. There are different tools for different scenarios. VAT tax is one of those.